Good evening. Welcome to Left, Right and Center. I'm Vishnu Shom on the program tonight. A significant setback to the BJP ahead of the elections in Karnataka. The former Chief Minister Jagdish Shetar has joined the Congress today in the presence of Party President Malikarjun Kharge. The move comes after Mr. Shetar quit the BJP after being denied a ticket for the forthcoming state assembly elections. Now, this is the latest piece of bad news for the BJP. They've already lost an ex-deputy chief minister and several legislators to the Congress. What are the implications of this, particularly in the Lingayat belt that the BJP considers its mainstay? Remember, Mr. Shetar and Lakshman Savadi, both of whom are now with the Congress, are considered major Lingayat leaders. Next on the show, as the Supreme Court gets set, to rule on the legality of same-sex marriage in India, the centre files a strong appeal to the court and says that same-sex marriage is a mere urban elitist view of the purpose of social acceptance. For the purpose of social acceptance, those very words. The centre argues that it is not up to a court to rule on a key issue and that the legislature needs to decide on this. So same-sex marriage, is this a basic right? Or should religious and social mores determine the future of same-sex marriage in India? And finally, Apple celebrates 25 years plus in India this week. And part of their celebrations involve opening up Apple store locations, which are designed to resonate a local look and feel, and be perhaps the most energy-efficient stores of this sort anywhere in the world. Rajiv Makni, our tech guru, has a special segment from the new Apple store in Mumbai, BKC. That's later on on this program. But first, our big focus is Karnataka. Jagdi Shetar, now a part of the Congress party, joining us to look at this. Vijay Prashad of uh, the BJP. We are uh, also joined by Professor Narendra Pani, Aishwarya Mahadev, and my colleague Veera Raghav, uh, all of them with us. But um, Mr. Prasad, let me come to you first. You know, first it was Lakshman Savadi, and now it is Mr. Shetar. Um, how is it that the BJP is allowing leaders with significant standing to be lost to the opposition? Can you hear me, sir? Mr. Prasad? All right, we've lost that line. We'll come to him in a moment. But uh, in fact, let me go across to Professor Narendra Pani uh, next. And it's essentially the same question. What is the, the significance of this loss uh, for the BJP, how do you see this playing ahead, particularly, for example, with the Lingayat vote? I, I think it's important not to see this in terms of individuals leaving the party or switching from one party to another. There is a larger story of the BJP, to my mind, that's, that's behind this. The BJP's rise in Karnataka has been built by individuals who could bridge the gap between the RSS and the Lingayat Matas. The master of this whole process was uh, and remains in some ways uh, Mr. Yadurapa. But there were a number of other players who connected with the Lingayat Mats who have a huge influence on the vote in Northern Karnataka and the RSS. Now, this round, the BJP seems to me, at least the Delhi BJP seems to, to me to have decided that it's time to break their connection with the Matas. So they have targeted all the Lingayat leaders, all the important Lingayat leaders who are connected to Matas or who have that ability to link up with the RSS, who come from an RSS background like Mr. Shetter, but also have an ability to link up with the Matas. And they have decided to, to wipe the, uh, the slate clean with all of them at one shot. It is a sign of confidence in Mr. Modi's leadership and in his appeal, uh, but it's also uh, attacking the very roots of the BJP's growth in Karnataka. Okay. What will happen, we don't know, but it has not been such a dramatic strategy has not been tried since 1980 when Mrs. Gandhi did it to Devrajas and succeeded. Right, but right. Uh, we don't know what the, how this will pan out. Aishwarya Mahadev, the way the BJP is actually arguing now after having lost their leaders is that this is actually going to work against the Congress because these are leaders, for example, Mr. Shetter, who has been so closely identified with the rise of the BJP and certainly the RSS in Karnataka, and that crossing over to the Congress party would be an insult to the Lingayat community. Therefore, the Congress may be shooting itself in the foot. How would you respond? Uh, Vishnu, two statements. The first, 
is that this is a systematic decimation of the old guard of the BJP in Karnataka because anybody who knows Karnataka history knows the contribution of Mr. Yadurapa, Mr. Anand Kumar, Jagdi Shetar and so on one. And the second is, let's make this very clear. The Lingayat community does not belong to one political party. The BJP are not the custodians of the Lingayat Dharma or the, or the Samaja or the community as a whole. And if they really believed that they were, their leaders or the tallest Lingayat leaders would not be treated this way, whether it, mis whether it was Mr. Yedurapa, Mr. Savadi, Mr. Jagdi Shetar himself. And also socially and economically, how have they empowered the Lingayats? They see them as a mere vote bank, which Mr. Yedurapa delivered to them. And now even when it came to reservation and whatnot, they've cheated the aspirations of the Lingayats time and time again. This is not a betrayal on the Lingayats. You know what a betrayal of the Lingayats is, Vishnu? That you have a six-time sitting MLA well under the age of going to the Margadarshak Mandal who did not want any Rajasapa governor, any higher post. He wanted to represent his people. He said, even before I filed nominations, if you had told me, sat me down and said, we want to retire, I would take it. But you decided to blindside me and throw me out unceremoniously. And that is what has hurt him. This is not about Lingayats. This is not about BJP. This is not about ID. Ideology. This is about sheer self-respect of a mass leader and how the BJP has insulted him. It has insulted Ishwarapa, it has insulted Yedurapa, it has insulted a lot of tall senior leaders and that is the reality of the BJP today. They're at war with themselves. There is an old guard, there is a new guard and they're all imploding at this point. And for the Congress party, we're very clear. We have had Lingayat leaders, very tall Lingayat leaders in our party, the Virashaiva Mahasabha president. Mr. Prasad, can you hear me, sir? Mr. Prasad, can you hear me now? We lost your line earlier on. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Yeah. How are you losing so many leaders of, uh, of significance in Karnataka? Now, Mr. Shetar, earlier, earlier Lakshman Savadi. No, uh, Vishnu, uh, sorry, I think uh, my link was... But go ahead, yeah, go ahead, minutes. yeah. So, so uh, yeah, as I said, I was telling earlier, Lakshman Savri and Jigdi Shetra is a close chapter for BJP. We have not lost anything from the existence of these two leaders. If at all, if, if someone has lost, it is Lakshman Savri and Jigdi Shetra that they have lost. The party had given them a lot of opportunities, right from being the MLA, Deputy CM, CM, Leader of Opposition, and uh, the speaker of the Vidhan uh, Sabha. So having provided all these kind of positions, uh, but still they have backstabbed the party. The party is not going to accept this. The no, party but Mr. Prasad, the final. party doesn't have a choice the, to, to accept or not to accept. <clears throat> They've left the no, party. No, see, party. But my, no, no. my point is this, Mr. Prasad, Vishnu. it's a simple question. No, no, no. Jagdish Shetar has won six me. elections for you in the past. Right? He's somebody who has really worked See, that does not mean to establish yes. the Lingayat stronghold I, of the BJP in Karnataka. So, Vishnu, is it enough I, for I you to say that. that we don't accept that anymore? No, uh, Vishnu. See, the fact is, the fact is, yes, we agree that uh, uh, Jigdi Shetar won six times. That does not mean he should not make way for the youngsters. Today, BJP has got credit of credit of fielding 72 fresh faces for the in the coming upcoming 2023 elections 33 percent 33 percent faces are new faces and that is the party and only bjp can field so much of new faces and if at all if anyone has to take risk it is the bjp party that can take risk i'm just no trying to party. understand it is vijay ji yeah. i'm trying to understand on what basis have you rejected uh you know, Mr. Shetar, Lakshman Savdi earlier on, on what basis? I mean, did you have internal polls to decide this or how did you do it? See, uh, apart from the internal polls, apart from the internal polls, the party is sending out a very strong message to make way for the youngsters. Karnataka is in the threshold of going to the next level under the double engine government, double engine Sarkar, and we call it as BJPA Barvase. When if this if the Karnataka has to go to the if the Karnataka wants to the next level leadership, it is the youngsters who can who can lead the Karnataka okay. from the front. It is okay. It is a mix of it is a if you see the out of 224, 33 percent, 33 percent is the new faces that BJP has introduced. The rest 
the rest 67 percent uh, are the uh, the old guards. Uh, all right, well, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what finally happens. Aishwarya had a point. Mr. No, no, Prasad, one I second. Me, uh, I, I want to keep. I want to keep the strike rotating. I'll come no, back no, to you. Let, let, no, I'll come no, back to me, you. Uh, I'll come yes, back sir, to you. One word. One word. What in one word? We call, in Tana we call it as Hale Beru Hosa Chiguru. Hosa Chiguru is the new faces. Hale Beru okay. is the old guards who has got the experience. Okay. This Aish is what the guy is going all to do. All right. Aishwarya, go ahead. Hosa Chiguru yella brastachara ne. But Vishnu, very simple. When he oh, talks Nimma about Nimma it, right? Nimma One Nimma second, I haven't interrupted you. Like, let's let's be courteous, right? Vishnu, yeah. it's a very simple thing. When he talks about age, right? Mr. Jagdish Shatter is 67. You have a 72-year-old Mr. Somana who's been given two seats. You have a 76-year-old Tipa Reddy and Chitra. You have 93-year-old Thomas. So clearly, am I talking? You have, Did you I interrupt have 93, you? Uh, no, Do I have no, no. to teach you manners? You have... No, no, no Mr. Mr. Prasad, let's, 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 all, let's, let's have a decent discussion. We come from, okay? One go, second. Go ahead. Yeah, should be the last person who can teach manners for others. So this is Congress the is the last person this who can teach manners for others. No, 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 one second, Mr. Prasad. I can't have a discussion if both of you are talking, you know, over each other. I will come no, back no, to you. The, the, the funny part is, no, no, Vishnu. The funny part is, uh, Congress is coming and teaching. Mr. Prasad, Mr. Prasad, I can't do a dis. Just, Mr. Prasad, go ahead. Go ahead. Aishwarya, make a point. And if this is the example of the youth, you really know where they're headed, right? But Vishnu is very simple. You talk about giving the youth a chance. There is Ramana Lamani who basically has a Loka Yukta case against him, so may not be able to contest. You have an N. Chandru in Shivaji Jinagar who is accused of trying to murder somebody who is investigating the illegal mining charges against him. You have a man called Manikanta Rathod who is contesting against Mr. Priyank Kharge, who is known as Chawal Chor across the state because he used to siphon off Annabagya or PDS rice and smuggle it out. And these are the young faces and the Hosa Chiguru, the old roots, the new leaves or whatever that the BJP has. They are mired in corruption. They are beyond despair because they're headed towards decimation. They're nose diving to less than 40 because their 40% commission government has bought them here. And today, the saddest thing is your tallest leaders are being pushed out with not even a second thought. And the fact is the new BJP will justify it in whatever means possible. But the people of the state are viewing All right. this. Okay. They're seeing exactly no, no. what is happening. Okay, Mr. No, Prasad, no. respond before I yeah. go across to my yeah, yeah, And yeah. I won't see, interrupt him. No, no, see. I'm sure you won't. Go what, ahead. Whatever, Mr. Prasad. See, whatever the, whatever the new faces uh, the uh, BJP has brought in, it is not for the, just for the knee-jerk reaction. It is for the long term that we can withstand. It, it is the decision of the party that going to support the party. And you know, these are the people who stand will stand by the party in the long run. These are the these are the normal karyakartas who have been offered, who have been given ticket to contest the next election and lead the Karnataka from the front. It is not like uh, the Congress uh, who has given a uh, ticket uh, to a 93 year. 93 year young Shamno Shivankarappa from from 82 year uh, young uh, Malikarjun Kharge. This is the kind of uh, uh, this is the kind of a heavyweight this Congress is uh, talking okay. about. Uh, and they question they question uh, 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 the BJP if BJP introduced 72 new faces. Uh, having said that, having said that, as I said, as I said. It's a mix of experience and for the new basis. And we believe, BJP believes in the new generation. And this is what going to matter for the people of Karnataka. And uh, BJP Karnataka is going to fulfill the right. aspirations of the people of okay. Karnataka. All right. I just want to go, of course, uh, to Veera Raghav. Veera Raghav, uh, let's talk a little bit about Lakshman Savadi. Now, he, as I understand it, his entry will back the Congress, um, you know, in the Belgavi region. He's the Lingayat leader from there. Belgavi lies, you know, at the heart of uh, the Karnataka Maharashtra region. There are, what, six, seven districts, in fact, uh, called Kittur Karnataka. Does his presence now in the Congress help the Congress uh, establish themselves in this region? I think you have to go back to the first answer that uh, Professor Pani gave, uh, Vishnu. This is not about individuals. It's not about Sabri or Jampi Shetta. I think this is also, yes, as he points out, shifting away from the control of the much. So I think the BJP at some level is attempting an experiment there. But whether it backfires or not, one has to wait till the election results. And also, Vishnu, Jampi Shetta or Lakshman Sabri aren't the likes of a Yedurappa, 
who has a mass leader following who will take away a percentage of vote share from the party these are it's it's the optics of these leaders going out and the optics that the congress is portraying that an insult has been perpetrated on lingayat leaders that's the dangerous part for the bjp because since the 90s the congress had ceded that space for instance a seat like hubli garwal the bjp first won it in 1994 after the hubli ka maidan movement it's held that seat since even when yedurappa broke the party the hubli garwal seat remained with the bjp the congress has ceded ground in that area now with the help of leaders like shetter or asabdi can they try to regain that ground that lost ground both in terms of the lingayat vote space and in terms of certain hardcore bjp seats which which are virtually given up for instance the congress didn't have a great candidate sure. for who be that they waited for jagdish shetter to leave and lapped him up at that time so that's i think the real test and the more important point that uh, professor pani made uh, does the bjp want to go beyond the control of the mats and the control of the social arithmetic that's held karnataka captive for many decades Professor Pani, I fail to understand how is it that uh, the political apparatus of the BJP was so successful in transitioning to new leaders in, for example, Gujarat. Uh, it went seamlessly. There wasn't protest, uh, at least none of, of this level, and they went and they did they did spectacularly well. But over here in Karnataka, the essence of the BJP, which at one level has been discipline, seems to have been shattered. I mean, here are leaders, and it's not just. Mr Savdi or Mr Shetter there are other uh, legislators who've also crossed over right so why is that happening in Karnataka i think you need to make a distinction uh, even within Karnataka between the parts where the bjp has control because of its rss and its traditional what you normally associate with the party and parts where it has control because it's managed to co-opt local leaders and i think the the lingayat the support for the bjp was last largely co-opted Uh, partly by Mr. Yadurappa, I wouldn't completely rule out the contributions of others as well. Now, what the BJP is trying to do is trying to get the the Gujarat model into place. It's removed even its senior leaders in in coastal Karnataka as well. So it is pushing for a complete control, I think, of the RSS over the party and what happens with it. where and in that process they're compromising here and it's also possible that in the coastal belt where they have opted for extreme uh, hindutva leaders right people of the bajrang dal variety right uh, giving up their traditional support even among I mean, traditional ideological support bearers that they had so they are going for an extreme that we don't know how that will work also because there is also a fatigue that comes with continuous violence right. continuous communal conflict how the fear of continuous communal conflict so we don't know how that will work out we don't know how their attack on the lingayat uh, mathas will work out but uh, it, it i if if it was a management uh, corporate strategy you might turn out and say it's it's an extremely high risk strategy all right yeah mr prasad uh, you know jagdish shetter says that there was a systemic conspiracy against him within the bjp which is why this has happened how would you respond see I don't know uh, why uh, Jagdish uh, Shetter is feeling uh, this uh, awkward situation the moment he left the BJP. I don't know why he is getting these kind of questions the moment he joined Congress. Okay, we want to understand. We want to understand the uh, when he was in BJP. The BJP took a lot of uh, 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 decisions wherein he was also part of it. We uh, 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 the BJP banned PF1. Okay, BJP banned PFI. We brought in uh, the uh, the Go Hatya uh, Ab Abolition Act, and we brought in <clears throat> so many issues where he stood by the party. Suddenly now he has gone ahead and joined a party which is uh, working against the national interest. And these are the and, uh, and the, Lakshman the, 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 Savadi has also uh, gone ahead and joined a party working against the national interest, and all your other legislators as well. So uh, I must then, say, when the Congress the says, and they they took this dig at you, what two or three days back, saying that the BJP in Karnataka is like a pack of cards, it seems to be true at this stage. 
No, no. See, it is it is their version. See, now what has happened suddenly in the recent past when the BJP Karnataka took a historic decision of bringing in the reservations uh, of four percent to Lingayas and other uh, even that has not worked for you. No, no, no. no. It, it has really worked, and they have the and it has already been implemented, and it is working. No, very but well. sir, the Supreme and Court. Correct me if I, the no, Supreme no, no. Court has said you cannot thing, carry on. The state no, government no, has given no, an assurance no, no. that they, that they, they will not carry on with that scheme. Supreme, no, no, Vishnu. The Supreme Court has only made the observation. The only thing, the only thing is now Jagdish Shetter has gone ahead and joined the Congress. Okay, it is his uh, uh, personal uh, choice uh, uh, to join a uh, party which works in the national uh, against the national interest. Now he should answer. Now he should answer okay. when the Congress Congress vehemently claims that we will give back the reservation. Now the BJP government has given these kind of reservations. Now, from which community he is going to uh, take back the, the reservation? That no, but the issue is whether that reservation no. can stand at all, sir. It's not no, true. No. As a policy, it, it will certainly. All right, Mr. Prasad, one second. Not. Let's get a let's get Aishwarya in on this. Play. Go ahead, Aishwarya. Yeah. I'd face palm if I could, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to make this very clear. This is the sort of fraud and the sort of fake news that the BJP keeps propelling, that they seem to have fixed the aspirations of people. One, they've passed a law which exceeds the cap of 50%, and I'm making this very, very simple, which is something that is not constitutionally permissible unless the central government puts it in the ninth schedule for you or amends 15 no, and 16 no, no. Central because of the constitution. None all, of which has happened. Very, One. Second, is, the Supreme Court, sir. Do you want me to? Do you want me to school you again in courtesy and manners? Let me. I am not going to allow. Uh, I feel like a school teacher with an errant child. Mr. Prasad, Mr. Prasad, she has a right to speak. Please have your episode. I will continue. She has the right to speak. But, but then don't, don't, don't then don't interrupt her. Right to send a wrong then don't, message. Then don't. Then no, no. I, I will give you an opportunity to. I will give you an opportunity. I will give you an opportunity. You are on national television, sir. Please allow her to speak, and then and then I will give you an opportunity as well. But now, if everybody speaks like this, then I'll have to end it. How does that serve anyone's purpose? Aishwarya, make your point. Vishnu, the fact remains is that none of us, anybody with common sense and can read a newspaper, will tell you that the BJP's policy is flawed. They have admitted to the court that they will not uh, uh, push for the implementation of this until the hearing, which is tomorrow. One second, it is not constitutionally and legally untenable. And even I am a lawyer, yes, but even basic people who read a newspaper and do not get their news from WhatsApp will tell you what I'm trying to say. The BJP has played a fraud upon these people and the aspirations of communities. One, no. they are mired in 40% corruption. No. And the fact of the matter is today they are losing some of their oldest leaders which leaves us with people like Vijay Prasad to take the party forward. So you really know how bright their future is, Vishnu. Alright, okay. Now that's a personal dig which could have been avoided, Mr. Prasad. Go ahead, uh, reply to that. On see, that, that when, yeah, no, go ahead. No. Yes. Yeah, yeah. See, uh, Vishnu, uh, as I said earlier, we should not learn manners from Congress. Okay, When they don't have anything to claim about. So what Congress does is they go for a personal attack. Which Aishwarya vehemently Please doing play against victim. me. That is on, only the thing the, that your party does. No, no, no. See, uh, Aishwarya. Aishwarya. Vishnu, get, ask him to get to the fact. Should, Please count huh. to me no, as no, 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 no. You don't interrupt ones. now. How are you uh, any different if you're going to yeah, interrupt? You should please. be the last person to interrupt. See, here, the, 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 the fact of the matter is, uh, Vishnu, we, will, uh, we are going to uh, go ahead with the, what of the reservations that we have claimed. And the, we have given the reservation based on the fact that some of the communities are really backward. And based on that, this is the, uh, this is the argument that we are going to put forth in right. front of Supreme so Court. So let us see having what the said, Supreme Court finally said, says. No, no. At, see, the moment, Supreme, at the moment, you can't <laughs> implement it. And the Supreme Court's observations on the proposal... Uh, and I think the Supreme Court said that the proposal itself was on extremely shaky ground. So you're going to have to actually look at it very, very closely. And let's see what the court has to finally say. Look, I need to wrap this up, this first debate. It's going to get quite heated in the days ahead, I can tell. But I'd like to thank you all very much for being with us. As the Supreme Court gets set to rule on the legality of same-sex marriage in India, the centre has filed a strong appeal to the court. They've said that same-sex marriage is a mere urban elitist view for the purpose of social acceptance, those very words. The centre has argued that it is not up to the court to rule on a key issue. The legislature needs to decide on this. So same-sex marriage, is this a basic right or should religious and social mores determine its future in our country? That's what we're looking at. 
Joining us now, first up, uh, Onir, the well-known filmmaker and uh, LGBTQIA rights uh, expert, LGBTQIA. I mean, uh, one, I mean, it's it's something which is the number, the the digits keep getting added on, and the alphabets keep getting added on, and it just reflects the fact that there is a reality which we've ignored for so long, uh, that it's time perhaps that we ne all need to wake up. But I think if you look at what um, this, what the government has said, um, you know, they've submitted that this is an urban elitist view, right? Same-sex marriage for the purpose of social acceptance. How would you respond, Onir? First of all, I just find it extremely ridiculous that, you know, uh, how do you come to a position which totally denies that sexuality is not based on which city you live in? You know, it does not have the divide of class, caste, religion, that we have all these divides in our society, but sexuality does not depend on that. And there's a huge rural population that's also, you know, uh, that belongs to the queer community. And how can you say that they do not deserve happiness? How can you say that the quest for happiness, the quest to have our basic rights to live together in dignity, to be married, to be able to open a bank account together is only the aspirations of the urban elite and it's not something that every single human being wants whether they're uh, set in a b town or rural wherever it's a bit it's also know, it's, factually it, incorrect how does one anybody reach the conclusion that people who are not in urban cities who are who are gay and want to be in a, a relationship which is a marriage uh, don't exist. How do you assume that? Yeah, absolutely. No, that is what I mean. The very fact that you're assuming that this is only the desire of a community that's set in the cities is absolutely ridiculous without any research. And just it's almost like a sense of desperation that tomorrow is a judgment and we all hope that the Supreme Court stands up for human rights and not led by such bizarre, you know, suggestions. You know, and I feel that that desperation is leading to coming up with any and every you know argument which makes absolutely you know sometimes you wonder that where does this come from where does these kind of arguments come from which has these no uh, scientific or you know there's no data you know it's just absolutely bizarre onir um th let's move away from this point and look at another argument which was put forward in the petition that um, the views of, uh, of religious leaders, religious denominations has to be kept in mind, personal laws have to be kept in mind, customs have to be kept in mind, and um, there is past precedent on all of these grounds to deny same-sex marriage. How would we, you respond we, to that? Uh, one is, of course, we have the Special Marriage Act, which can always be applied to us, but also I feel how unfair it is to deny this right to someone who is a practicing Hindu or Muslim or Christian who wants to follow their religion and at the same time uh, get married. And I feel that it is, you know, why should religion or social norms, anything be static, anything that is unwilling to change for better? And I feel that, you know, history and culture, everything is you know, one looks at that to become better, not to just oppress a certain community using all these excuses. So I, I personally feel that, you know, of course, there is the possibility of the Special Marriage Act, but it's unfair to those who want to, you know, be who want to just be a part of their religion sure. and not out of it. It's their choice. Only another point, the field of marriage, the petition says, uh, if it were changed, uh, if there were same-sex marriages uh, which were allowed, it would have a, quote, inevitable cascading effect on several other statutes. As in that, pull the, pull the, take out the, the whole card, the, card, the entire system of cards would come crashing down. You know, I just All of uh, it. I was wondering if tomorrow I get married, how is it that my heterosexual neighbor who's living next door, how is their marriage going to fall apart? How does me opening a bank account with my partner affect anybody else's, you know, the way they uh, go about their life? How do me, do I being, ha having the ability to make a house, you know, to have a property with my partner, 
change anything for all those. You know, they already have all these rights. How does giving another person his rights or her rights or their right take away anything from you unless you want to deny us our right because you want to take over those rights. You want to keep that power structure. Maybe you want Do to take you would you would agree that um, if uh, same-sex marriage is legalized in India, there have to be additional laws which guarantee additional rights. For example, okay. what you mentioned about opening a bank account together, that's one very small example. Think about adoption, right? The rights of that child. Uh, these are profound things which also have to be legislated with. So if there is a favorable judgment, same-sex marriage does happen. It cannot just be left at that. Uh, all of the rights which go Any, along with that need to be legalized. Absolutely. And that should not be the reason to stop it. Because I feel that, you know, when you take a step, of course, you have to take additionals. You know, today when you build a dam, you're relocating people. Yeah. Right. You're looking at the adverse effects that it has on ecology and how do you address it? Yeah. Similarly, when you take this, you have to address things like adoption and adoption. You know, again, the excuses, uh, the apprehensions that people are is absolutely does not make sense. They talk of child abuse, which, you know, uh, today there are boys and girls who are abused by men. That does not stop anybody from, uh, you know, uh, uh, having heterosexual marriages. Sexuality or, uh, doesn't uh, uh, doesn't define abuse. Abuse yeah, is abuse. It goes. <laughs> and similarly, just like heterosexual couples need counseling, someone needs to monitor when a child is adopted. You know, to see that the child is happy and the parents are prepared to accept. It has to be the same for a homosexual couple. You know, yeah. they need. To to be monitored, they need to be counseled, and the child needs to be protected. You know, and of course, these laws need to come, you know, in place when, but that shouldn't be a reason to stop us from getting our right. Yeah. Look, Onir, you're welcome to stay on, but I've got a panel uh, over here as well. Uh, I'm joined by uh, Sachin Jain, Administrator of Ghar, which is the Gay Housing Assistance Resource. Shashank Shekhar Jha, he's an advocate in the Supreme Court. He's got concerns about same-sex marriage being legalized. Uh, we've got Dr. Surbhi Mitra, she's an equal rights activist. And we've got Rahul Ishwar, who's got concerns about same-sex marriage going ahead. Shashank Shekhar Jha, let me come to you first. Um, to those who are, uh, you know, uh, are members of the LGBTQIA community, Marriage is just an extension of normalcy in their lives. Why deny anybody a chance at living a life which, which you and I <clears throat> live? You know, we are, both, we are both married and we are happy. Why deny somebody that right on the basis of their sexuality? Uh, Namaste Vishnuji and every other fellow panelists. Uh, Vishnuji, uh, two points and two rights. We as a society has an individual rights and as a societal rights. Now with individual rights, you have the right for LGBT community where they can have their own personal preferences as far as their sexual partners are concerned. But then when you consider and talk about the culture or the social aspects or social rights, you need to study the norms, the culture, the tradition and every other aspect to it. And that is why how society builds through time. Uh, memory. Now, in this country and many, many other places across, now you have a traditional system which is coming through religion, religious aspects also, which says that a biological man and a woman can have a married life. Whereas in India, you have a system of, say, a, a live in relationship where anyone, irrespective of religion or say gender, can live together. Now, if you want that those individual rights should be clubbed with the cultural rights, that will give that, that will give rise to multiple other aspects and difficulties as far as norms are concerned, as far as cultures no, are concerned. What difficulties? And one that more important I, in fact, fact I, is that Shashan, there are not what, enough what studies to show that how it will affect or impact the uh, the life and livelihood of the welfare of the child child of the society. No, okay. So what are what are the problems? You believe that uh, what children might be impacted if if their parents are gay. Is that what you're saying? What, what are the other reasons, Shashank? I'm trying to understand. Yes. When you say that yes, it would Vishnu. impact, what what would it impact? Yeah. So Vishnu ji, I guess uh, again now now there are two three points here. One, we do not have adequate studies to show as to how it impacts the welfare of the child. So whenever you make law 
or 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 formulate a law you need to have adequate studies as far as that is concerned now point number 2 is that all those countries which are having these same sex marriage laws currently are not regulated with personal laws this is country called india where say 95% or 99% population get them registered under personal laws how can you say that you want to interpret hindu marriage act altogether which directly comes from our two okay. hindu schools of laws daya okay. bhag and mitakshara okay. i guess that is not possible now islam says you cannot have same okay. sex marriage so islam says you cannot have welfare marriage. of children and hindu says we Shashank, let's leave it over there so that I can bring in my other panelists. Respond to that, uh, Sachin Jain. We have uh, we have different religions, we have different customs, different faiths, divergent religions, castes, subcastes, etc., etc. And our system has always been to have marriage among heterosexual people. And therefore, the argument that's made now is that that's the way it's always been. That's the way it should remain. How would you respond? So my response is on the basis of the rights of the individual. I think all of us, as queer individuals, we are born into these traditions. So, for example, I am a practicing Jain. So, Shashank ji, like you mentioned, uh, you talked about individual and societal norms, cultures, etc. So, as a devout Jain who has been brought up in a Jain family, I am inside the culture. I am part of uh, the Indian culture, and I don't like being othered. I don't like being treated as as an adversary as, as someone who is in opposition to what my culture stands for. So when I grow up for example I am all the time experiencing this dichotomy right because uh, the culture that I am uh, born with and grown up with has its moral its ethical legal framework and then you know when I uh, my sexuality dawns or my sexuality awakens and I realize that my fulfillment uh in a in a truest state of a union you know with another person with is with another man uh then this is at odds so already so so many of us are suffering from that when you spoke shashank ji you talked about uh, when you talked about individual level you talked about sexual partners but shashank ji it's not just about sexual partners for us it is about uh having a complete full life you know of fulfillment romantic fulfillment emotional fulfillment uh all of these things and we are not standing in opposition to the norms the culture the traditions of our country we are proud of it hum bhartiya hai hame bhartiya hone pe garv hai hum koi kisi aur grah se nahi aaye hue hai hum yahi ke hai yahi pe pale bade hue and the other thing that we talked about is that there are things like domestic partnerships and uh, you know uh, civil unions etc uh, now the thing is if we talk about equality before the law you know then uh, while these may confer many of those rights you know which we are uh, talking about which is uh, for the uh, uh, you know dif different financial social etc things uh, it is still it is still lesser then what it is for a full marriage so as as citizens of india who are proud to be indian and who have dignity who pay tax we want the full rights of uh, of uh, being indian also you know you talked about um, the i i understand what you're talking about that that our country there is uh, the preponderance of personal rights and the countries that you know have uh, the other countries where these rights have been given so from 2001 since the netherlands actually okayed same sex rights there are about 25 countries in which right. so there is precedent been. elsewhere okay lots of yeah. points uh, and you've got all your points at the at the tip of your finger so uh, shashank i'll come to you later i want to go across to rahul ishwar rahul you know you you're a devout hindu um and and you know faith and 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 our religion is very important for you but in our hindu faith isn't equality before god something which is the basis of of our faith it is and therefore equality before god is all that you know many of our panelists seek it's it's the same god it's the same faith and therefore why can you and i be equal in front of our god and some of our panelists over here cannot be why vishnu ji first of all respect to sri unir and sachin for their fight i diverge in them in the position that we take regarding homosexuality but at the same point of time may their fights be fulfilled and you know, all the best and may god bless them second there are let me be very honest with this there are apprehensions in a huge majority of people regarding homosexual marriages see we are all there was a meeting too where there were people from many communities leaders from many communities we all agreed that homophobia is bad 
we should not promote homophobia we should discourage homophobia and we should discourage any kind of discriminatory practices at the same point of time not only in india but worldwide people like pop francis have taken a very nuanced view he rightly pointed out who am i to judge others but at the same point of time catholic church even led by a very reformist pop francis is yet to or perhaps uh, will not give acceptance to gay marriages so there is a nuanced difference one yes say no to homophobia but second marriage as a civil union marriage as a sacrament marriage as a social contract marriage is an institution between a biological man and woman that survived for thousands of years many people are having apprehensions regarding this yes it is up to the supreme court to decide there should be equality before god and one more thing as vishnuji rightly pointed out in hindu community it's a bit more uh, tolerant to diversity of you know gender or diversity of sexual preferences but our semitic friends especially the christian communities and muslim communities they have a bit more written theology where it is said sodom and gumra had negative experiences of uh, homosexuality so it's a bit more layered and nuanced debate but i believe everyone at the end of the day agrees to the fact that homophobia should be discouraged but yes there are some spiritual cultural reservations about the entire thing that should that i believe the activists from the homosexual community will be mindful of okay dr mitra you know there there is a uh, entire argument also what the center is arguing in the supreme court is that look it's not up to you the supreme court to decide on this it is up to the legislature to decide on this so how do you uh, how do you look at that argument yeah so in this i would like to add that had the parliament done something about it it would have happened by the, by now but what has been happening is that a lot of governments already we have put up petitions in the parliament multiple times in and various governments i'm not saying that one particular government but all the governments failed to do something for the lgbtqia community and that was the reason we had to approach the judiciary that is very 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 uh, clear cut and also just broaching upon the topic that is today's that is it is an urban elitist view and not a basic right i actually have a small list which i will uh, like to tell you please here. go ahead that is it will just take me 30 seconds or something go ahead in which you can you will see all aspects of the community all all castes all religions everything in that you will see that certain people from the rural area have also come out proudly and they are doing wonderful work so it's not an urban elitist idea so for example the kannada author vasudendra inspired small town gay men to be out and proud lesbian couple from mahisagar gujarat and also a lesbian couple from rural bundelkhand got married in front of media grace banu a dalit transgender activist from thudukodi uh, uh, tamil nadu supported trans women throughout the pandemic small towns uh, boy kaushik hore started queer us that brought queer people together in small towns started satrangi also a trans feminine indian livelihood venture Rafael Alom Rahman decided and dedicated works to counter queer phobia and islamophobia from Dhubri Assam he is also the founder of queer muslim project Duti Chand as we know the fastest printer in india when she came out as a lesbian her village uh, disowned her but she worked for the same village during the pandemic and lastly dr manabi bandopadhyay small town naihati she is the first transgender college principal her autobiography that is a gift of goddess lakshmi captures her journey and it is very well read all throughout the country these are just some examples there are many more people doing a lot of work in the rural area as well who are from the community and this proves that in spite of the fact that there is not much research into it because not, no research was being done by the government or any national body that is the reason we couldn't know how many people are there in the rural or the urban but it is a guarantee from my side being a heavy reader in research and being a psychiatrist myself that i have seen so many people from the lgbtqia so it is not an urban elitist thought it is definitely a question of basic rights shashank would you like to respond to that that this there's nothing you know exclusively urban about this if you're gay you can be in any part of the country and you could want Absolutely. to be married in any part of the country is not no urban business in this yeah vishnu ji i i i agree to the point that uh, yes lgbtq community uh, is present everywhere and uh, we should not discriminate against them as far as individual rights are concerned and that is why article 21 is there but as far as marriage rights or for that point or or for that point uh, recognition of marriage rights uh, as far as our legal rights already present in concern i don't think that is feasible uh, unless we have proper studies unless we have a uniform laws for everything unless 
a society at large accepts it see here and there there could be people from different categories but you cannot say that you no know, this gives a larger purview or or reflects the society at large and that is why we have a parliament where 542 people 542 are they are in lok sabha 250 in rajya sabha they and then there are 28 states with assemblies those people actually reflect the people at large and that is why first judiciary should not interfere into this and point number 2 vishnu ji and that is very important why do we marry uh, in the first place in any society now that gives a right to have a procreative purposes now in western society wherever these uh, same sex marriages are allowed you see no. that the society is failing in those states divorce rates are very high in those states no. as compared to india you see divorce rates are very less as compared to india you see that the family okay. system so, is very much higher you have a responsibility for child in india where welfare of the child is concerned you if you compare any western countries where uh, same same sex marriages are allowed you see the rights or the duties of parents towards the child and in india so okay. you will understand okay. so, the Shashad, difference let's get a reply to what you've said sachin is the is the goal of marriage procreation is it to, to is it to have children well you know even if one assumes that it were to have children technology has settled that debate like i think quite a while ago where you know there are same sex uh, couples all over the world who have uh, uh, children and uh, you know like uh, sashank ji you talked about studies so there are studies which are present which show that children who are brought up by lgbt pre- parents have no more or less likelihood of themselves being lgbt or no more or less likelihood of being raised in a better or a worse way and now we have a few decades of uh, uh, you know uh, data on that so i think that the procreative argument is out i think if we look even if we look at the indian ethos what an ideal indian family is what is an ideal family a family where the members love each other support each other respect and trust each other and you know they can go and achieve the pursuit of happiness in a safe a uh, non judgmental way and so uh, you know if if the lgbt community wants to be a part of that i don't think they are distancing themselves from the indian ethos i think they are in fact going towards the indian ethos i'd also uh, vishnu ji with your permission like to talk a little bit about this debate about judicial versus executive now uh, like uh, uh, sudhi ji said you know uh, if you remember the uh, matter about 377 started in 1998 when the aids bhedbhav virodhi andolan uh, brought up the matter of condoms not being distributed in tihar jail mm-hmm. and then at the time i am december 1975 born so i was 22 years old by the time decriminalization came which was by the court okay yes. it was 2018 so uh, i was 43 years old so my life went by in waiting for the winds of so- social uh, acceptance to change my entire life went by so how many millions of more indian lgbt young people are we going to uh, you know throw under the train like this and make them wait for 542 members of the lok sabha and the rajya sabha and all the of our states uh, you know to give them uh, give them their due would you like to reply uh, rahul yeah just one submission you know i genuinely respect the fight of the community and uh, perhaps we need more sensitization we need more education but many people even though they say outside are very comfortable with this when we go to the inside a huge middle class of the, our nation are, are having a lot of a uh, second thoughts about the entire thing i'm not saying you should be a majoritarian state but there is a genuine apprehension that apprehension is not regarding criminalization that apprehension is regarding according the status of marriage or according the status of our sacred marriage system to the homosexual community so many people are having that genuine inhibition in their mind they may not be able to voice it out they may not tell it for the fear of being branded homophobic but there is a huge section of population like that maybe the community activist can really have some kind of sensitization education drives so that people will be better informed but the humble submission is social acceptance comes first then legal acceptance that's the core submission here first there should be a social acceptance then there should be legal acceptance this is the premise from which we are arguing we're all part of the same society uh, dr mitra you know uh, i'll i'll read out one sentence from the petition today it submitted that the ripple effects of such decisions are difficult to anticipate and rahul uh, referred to that in his own words um how would you re- re- reply to that that this is going to result in something so big that we in india in our society can't handle it yes yeah, see uh, i know many gay couples and lesbian couples who are connected who are actually married in their own society uh, you may call it a spiritual marriage you may call it a religious marriage uh, it's not legal 
but they are still married to each other so nothing earth shattering has happened yet i i don't know when it is going to happen probably the world is going to fall apart i'm still waiting for it to fall apart but it has it okay and there are a lot of people after 377 this decriminalization who came out and proudly with their partner even before that homosexuality existed it exists since the inception of human beings it exists in more than 500 species in this world so i don't think uh, nature or god or whatever higher power you believe in created homosexuals because it wanted to end the earth suddenly after some time and if you give them their rights oh my god what is going to happen what are these homosexuals going to do they are going to rule over the world and heterosexuality will be something somewhere else no nothing is going to happen like that what is going to happen is that the homosexuals will get their rights and we are just asking for equal rights we are not asking for special rights there is nothing special in being married legally with a legal certificate but the rights that come with it are equal rights that we also deserve just like any other sure. heterosexual couple living in a cis heteronormative society uh, people are very homophobic and there is only one thing homophobia is a disease homosexuality is not and homophobia has a treatment that is good education and awareness you know i think that's a good way of ending this particular debate one way or the other it's going to be a landmark judgment by the supreme court when it does come it's a basic issue of rights for countless citizens of our country our brothers and our sisters uh we're going to leave this debate at that i'm sure we're going to revisit it soon thank you all very much for being with us